Welcome back to BNB Sports Zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled and hits. Welcome to DC. What is going on everybody, it's your boy Abdullah coming at you with another video for the channel and welcome back to the DMV Sports Zone. And in today guys, I'm coming at you with the recap of day 16 of training camp for our beloved Washington Commanders. Before I get into the video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe for more DMV Sports content as we try to push out as much fire content out there as possible. And let's get straight to the video. A lot of stuff happened today and we'll start off with news about tight end Cole Turner who we have seen and is and shown and said by many people on the team trainers that the team is very being very cautious with tight end Cole Turner so again we want him to be healthy come week one because we've seen what he has done in training camp he's been making those big plays and Carson Wentz loves his tight ends especially his big tight ends and Cole is really huge I'm like 6'3 and Cole is like 6'6 and I was like man he's a Sasquatch but Cole Turner is a guy to keep an eye on with his tight end room along with John Bates and talking about John Bates and Amari Rogers, this is interesting to see how they play out because Sammy Reyes is just got on IR and I don't think he'll be back on the team. He didn't get any snaps in the preseason. So I really think the tight end room is going to be Logan, John Bates, Cole Turner, and the last spot's got to be Curtis Hodges. I think Curtis Hodges is tar targeted more, but this could change. If Amari Rogers balls out in the next two preseason games, then who knows? But Curtis Hodges... He was, he was looking active out there. Almost had a touchdown, but was down at the one. But yeah, tight end room, as Logan Paulson said, we may had an interview with him. Make sure to check out the most recent video. He talked about how tight end is one of the strengths on this team, this group. And Logan, commander's team analysis, he knows his stuff, a former NFL tight end. Played here for a couple of years during RG3's peak. So I really think that Cole Turner... Was a sleeper pick, and he's looking like he can be something. A gem, a diamond in the rough, as they say. But that's besides the tight end. Let's move on. Jamin Davis, he's been getting more praise. Logan Paulson said that he's looking like a starting NFL linebacker, which he didn't look like most of last year. And running back J.D. McKissick says, Jamin Deffy looks totally different. So again, this is huge. If Jamin Davis, if the team somehow develops him in a way where they want him to be this electrifying player where he can just tackle anybody a tackling machine maybe you know dial up some blitzes with him he's that glue if we put that all together this defense i'm not gonna say top three but top 10 could go back to that 2020 defense so jamin davis man all rides on you the 19th pick from kentucky a lot of people are upset at how he underperformed his uh rookie year so i think sophomore year definitely is gonna Needs to improve, and we're hyping him up, so we'll see how that goes. But let's talk about some moves the team made. They have cut Devontae Bosby, cornerback, and Dion Calhoun, guard, as they they put on injury reserve fullback Alex Arma and Sammy's, tight end Sammy Reyes. As we know, all, all know, Sammy Reyes came from that Chilean international program. It's a freak of nature, so I don't know if he'll be back on the team anytime soon with his injury or whatever situation he's dealing with but the key cut that happened was cornerback troy apke man oh man trapke this man has been always finding his way around this roster for the last four years and now that he's gone deron Payne is the only active 20 player from that 2018 draft class which is very sad and he's probably gone next year too so that's besides the point i don't want i don't want to be negative about this team because i do too much of that but yeah we're making moves a move that I want to talk about. The Eagles are division rivals. They cut former Washington Jimmy Moreland. And I don't know. I, Jimmy Moreland, the JMU product. I miss him a lot. He was balling out here when he was a rookie. Maybe we can come back, let him sign him to a deal and put him in this cornerback room. Devont, uh, Stephen Parker, I think that he played great in the preseason game against the Carolina Panthers. So that's great to see. I think the depth is going to be there on the cornerback position. And Ben St. Juice gets better. 
William Jackson gets better. I just think overall the secondary last year got better when throughout the year, so I think they'll be ready when when they had some experience with within their realm. And now let's talk about the man that's been always coming out of our mouth, Antonio Gibson. He got a couple reps as one of the protectors behind the punt unit, first team and second team and third team. And a lot of people, <coughs> in my opinion, are kind of overreacting to this. I really think this is a tactic of Ron Rivera to discipline Antonio Gibson to, sh to send a message and display how if you don't show up and you have that fumbling issue, Brian Robinson's right there. I still think Gibby's going to be our number one running back come week one against the Jaguars. But again, I will keep saying this, guys. I love Antonio Gibson. He is someone I'm rooting for. But if that fumbling issue becomes, if we see him fumble the preseason again, the team's not going to cut ties, but he's definitely going to be on the bench. So, But I'm not overreacting to him playing with second and third stringers because Logan, Logan said in our interview that he's seen Terry play with second stringers. It's just no biggie. It's just the offensive scheme, and maybe it's just a way of Ron disciplining Gibby. So Antonio Gibson, I'm rooting for you, man, please. Terry, he got some Terry news. He caught a pass over the heads of safety Cam Curl and Kendall, Fu Kendall Fuller. McLaurin was seriously talking trash with Fuller. So that's great to see. I love to see Terry just being Terry. We saw that one catch he had in the preseason. I don't know if that was his only catch. Caught the ball from Carson, 15 to the sideline, and just bulldozed that man. Was, I love it. Terry's just doing Terry things. Defensive back Danny Johnson had a one-handed interception on the red zone during red zone drills. That was pretty sick. Danny Johnson was getting torched in coverage uh, during the during the Carolina game. I'm not going to lie, but if he somehow could improve with this next upcoming games, these next games, I think it's Kansas City on Saturday, and the game after that is the Ravens. I hope the Ravens win their next game, and when we play them, I hope we break that preseason winning streak because that would be so, so nice to head into the season with that type of momentum. That's besides the point. But Danny Johnson... Doing good things out there. Hopefully, can translate to the field come Saturday. Scott Turner, offensive coordinator for our Commanders, said that Wentz has been outstanding every day. The comfort level in this offense is increasing. I love to see it. I love to see it. I'm telling you, we put everything together. Ten wins, eleven. Who knows? And Ron Rivera talked about in his presser that this running back room, there's always competition. Again, this is just heating up about if B-Rob is going to take Antonio Gibson's place. But that's pretty much it, guys, for the recap of Day 16. Let me know your thoughts on the Washington Commanders so far. And how will they do against the Kansas City Chiefs on Saturday? Like I said before, at the beginning of the video, if you haven't, go watch the interview with Naughty and I. We got to talk to Logan. It was like special Commanders Weekly. It was great. We're definitely going to keep going with these training cap recaps. I'll have a preview video for you for the preseason game. And yeah, a recap as well. And Commanders football is finally back. I've said it so many times, but I am so satisfied and just ready to see this Commanders team this season. I've been, I haven't been this happy for this team probably in a long time. I'm not going to lie, but I don't want to get my hopes up again and get disappointed year after year as usual. But that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at DMV Sports Zone. And with that being said, I'm out. Peace.